What's up guys? Uh, today we are going to have a look through 10 of the biggest trends for summer 23. All the brands have released their summer ranges, all the influencers have got their outfits nailed, so we've got a pretty good idea of where the trends are going, what everyone's going to be wearing. But rather than just wearing what every influencer tells you to wear, we're going to try and have a look at some of these trends and decide whether they're ones we should jump on or whether we should give them a wide berth. Some of these trends are going to be here for a long time, some of them they're just going to be this season. We're going to try and figure out which is which and we're going to try and help you guys decide which of these trends you want to jump on for the summer. First up, old money aesthetic. So if you watch any fashion content on YouTube or uh, TikTok or Instagram, you're going to come across millions of these videos telling you how to get the old money aesthetic. Now it seems like half these videos just tell you go to Zara, buy a pair of chinos, a linen shirt and a polo um, and always loafers, always loafers and you get that and you're going to look like you're rich. It doesn't really work that way. So anyway, as the name suggests, the objective of this look is to make it look like you come from generational wealth. Um, I think it's come partly from the popularity of Succession and yeah, no doubt there were some cool looks in that series. Well, and without getting too political, I think maybe part of it comes from the fact that life is pretty tough at the moment. Um, inflation has gone crazy, it's hard to get a good job, so I think the idea of having this generational wealth, meaning that you never really have to work or never had to work, is obviously an amazing fantasy for people to have, and so people want to replicate that look. What people forget is that a lot of people with generational wealth don't look stylish at all. They look like this or this. And we don't really want to look like that. So as you can tell, I wanted to hate the style. I wanted to hate the look. However, most of the pieces recommended in this look are actually pretty cool and very timeless pieces. So we're talking chinos or nice trousers. We're talking loafers. We're talking nice quality shirts, whether an Oxford shirt or a linen shirt. And if you combine these pieces, you get a good look. Also, if it's done right, then the uh, trend does encourage buying good quality pieces, good quality timeless pieces that will stand the test of time. And so there's not much to dislike about that. So as much as I wanted to give this a thumbs down because of all the horrible content around it, actually the look is pretty good. So despite not wanting to, I'm going to give it a thumbs up. So as I mentioned, one of the most important pieces within the old money aesthetic is the loafer. And that brings us off to the second trend, which is the loafer. Loafers are everywhere this summer, not just old money aesthetic looks. And the more I see them, the more they grow on me. Um, they're way more versatile than I'd initially thought. They look great with jeans or shorts, and I actually think they look better in casual outfits rather than smarter, uh, more formal outfits. So the question is, will we still be wearing them in three or four years' time? Despite them being a timeless piece, I think there is a risk that due to the massive oversaturation of them this year, that there may be a backlash next year or the year after. Despite that risk, I do really like them, and I do really hope that we are still wearing them in three or four years. They're such a great option for a summer shoe, but way more interesting, I think, than just plain white trainers or a sandal. So, yeah, big thumbs up. Next up, knitted or crocheted polo shirts. Polos with a bit of texture. I like polo, I like texture. Nice, yeah. But a lot of these are pretty warm for summer. Especially with the crochet ones, you have to wear an undershirt or you look a bit douche. So I'm not completely sold. Again, there's a massive oversaturation of these this year. We've seen them in so many places. So I really don't think it's going to be anything more than just a one year thing. I don't hate the look, far from it. I do think there are some really cool outfits with them. So if you like them, by all means go ahead just with a little bit of caution with the knowledge that I don't think they're going to be that fashionable next year. The next trend is the camp collar shirt or the resort shirt or the Revere shirt. Lots of names for very similar types of shirts. I'm not entirely sure what the difference is between a lot of them. If you could explain the difference, please tell me in the comments. These are as summary as it gets. Um, we're seeing loads of them this year. We're seeing all types. We're seeing loud ones. We're seeing plain ones. We're seeing them being worn buttoned up, we're seeing them wear worn open, um, we're seeing them open over a white tank, 
and I think all the looks are great so I really love them especially love them over a nice fitted white tank I think that's just such a solid look I'm a bit less wild about the really out there loud brash ones but if you go for a neutral one or one with a nice tasteful pattern then I think you've got a great piece that you'll come back to year after year. Next one is the baggy and oversized trend. We all know that the trends have moved away from slim and skinny fits over the last couple of years, getting progressively looser. A lot of this has come from the 90s and Y2K revivals and just a general backlash against overly skinny jeans. And being a 90s kid, I quite like the fact that looser, more relaxed fits are trending. But this year, some of the trends have gotten really, really baggy. Um, some of them a little bit too much, in my opinion. There's no doubt that the really baggy fits can look good, but it really takes a lot of effort to do it right. And if the fit isn't absolutely nailed, then it can look a bit silly. So I'm giving the trend a thumbs up, but a qualified one. Um, yes to relaxed jeans. Yes to airy linen shirts. Yes to boxy t-shirts. But no to huge parachute pants and massive 90s suits. The next trend we've got is cropped tops. So menswear has definitely taken influence from women's clothing recently. And that's great when it comes to accessorising, colours, etc. But not crop tops. Even with the most amazing body, you'll still look ridiculous. So unless you look like Mahoney from Police Academy, don't do it. The tank tops, on the other hand, look great. The only caveat on this one is that you have to be confident in your own body to wear them. You don't have to be super muscular, but if you are a bit self-conscious, uh, if you're carrying a few extra pounds in your belly, or if you've got skinny arms, I've got both, um, then yeah, you need to be confident enough to wear them. They can be worn on their own, but you do run the risk of looking a bit of a douche. If you do want to wear them on their own, just make sure the rest of the outfit is pretty basic because just wearing a tank top on its own is enough of a statement. You don't need anything else loud there. I definitely prefer them as a layering item under an open shirt. I think that's just a perfect summer look. The next trend is definitely a love it or hate it one. It is jorts. When did denim shorts become jorts? Anyway, as I said, you love them or hate them and I love them. They're, they're probably not ideal for hotter climates, but I live in Scotland, so that's fine. As with jeans, we've got some really baggy ones this year, and I actually I prefer the baggier jorts than I do to super baggy jeans. Especially in streetwear outfits, um, some of the baggy jorts are super cool. Unfortunately, I'm a bit old for that, but if you're not, then yeah, go for it. So yeah, I love them, I highly recommend them. But what I would say is that if you don't love them, don't buy them. Um, they won't always be as popular as they are this year. And if you didn't like jorts before, then you probably won't like them in future. So as with anything, don't buy it just because it's trending. Only buy it if you really like it. So the next one is another one with a terrible name and a bit of a strange one. It's the blowcore trend. So yeah, so football shirts and terrace wear seems to be having a bit of a moment. So much so that you'll see Instagram pictures of cool kids in New York wearing random football shirts from the 90s. And so these are often paired with bootcut jeans and Adidas Sambas. So all we need now is a super dry revival and your dad will be the most fashionable guy that you know. So yeah, bit of a strange one as I said and I'm not sure where I stand on it. I love a lot of old football shirts but I don't really associate them with dressing well and when you see a football shirt being put into a super fashion forward outfit it reminds me a little bit of when you see a teenager wearing a Beatles t-shirt or something like that that they don't really understand maybe that's just a bit of music and football snobbery but I don't know I, I don't love it and I'm more sure about this trend than I am with any of the others that this is definitely a short-term fad so moving on from blowcore takes us on to the last of the trends that we're looking at and possibly the biggest trend of the year uh, and that is the adidas samba the samba fits in with the blowcore trend but it's transcended that and it's just absolutely everywhere this summer if you spend five minutes on instagram i bet you'll see at least 10 people wearing an adidas samba 
and Sambas are great. There's really little to dislike about them. I love Adidas three stripe trainers and it's cool that they're having a big year. So I just think that there's so many other Adidas trainers that are just as cool, if not cooler. I don't quite understand why it's only the Samba that gets the hype. So for me, Gazelles, Handball Special, München, most of the City series, some of the ZX range, Forums, Campus. These are all just as cool, if not cooler than the Samba. And because they're not hyped as much, you can get them just as easily, if not more easily, and at better prices. So I'm in the middle on this one. Um, love the trainer, just think that they're better options. And personally, I don't like to wear the same trainer that everyone else is wearing, so I'm more likely to look at one of the other options. So there we have it, there's our 10 big trends for the summer. Uh, which ones do you love and which ones do you hate? Let me know in the comments. Um, also let me know if there's any that you think I've missed. As ever, if you've enjoyed the content, please give it a like and a subscribe. It really helps the channel out. And I hope to see you soon. Cheers. Bye.